American, Delta, and United. The big three airlines dominate the domestic air travel market within the US. And for travelers facing a choice between different airlines on their routes for basic economy, the quality and service of their air carrier is a crucial component. In this video, I compare my three recent domestic flights with American, Delta, and United. Stay tuned. Over the last few weeks, I've released three separate flight reviews detailing my experiences with American Airlines, Delta Airlines, and United Airlines on flights across the domestic US. If you'd like to watch each of them in turn, as to gain more detailed insight into each airline service, click the link on your screen. In order to best compare each of the airline's service, I'll break down the key components of my flights into several categories. First of all, before taking step onto the aircraft, it's important to consider baggage allowance and pricing. While I cannot do a direct price comparison, analyzing the baggage policies are crucial, as it can affect the price that you pay. American and Delta include a free carry-on on their basic economy fares, a huge perk for travelers that don't want to travel with just a small backpack or purse. United, however, does not include carry-on baggage with their basic economy fares, forcing travelers to pay extra for even just a carry-on bag. While a personal item is still allowed, most travelers are used to traveling with carry-on luggage, a habit that will cost extra on United. In many scenarios I've examined, this has led to United costing more than their fellow American full-service carriers, and almost makes them feel like a low-cost carrier, charging extra money for every single service that is normally free on full-service carriers. Overall, American and Delta's policies feel standard, but United's lack of a free carry-on has many times led me to avoid their fares. Before I dive into the next category, make sure to consider subscribing to my channel. More great aviation content is on the way, including new flight reviews and comparisons just like this one. Also, check the pinned comment below to earn $10 for free by downloading Cash App, a free cash transferring service. That being said, let's get into the actual product. For each of these flights, I was seated in basic economy, which meant I experienced the standard amount of legroom and personal space in their economy product. For someone 6'4", legroom can be a deciding factor, but thankfully, all three of my flights boasted the same amount of legroom at 31 inches. This is standard for a full-service domestic carrier, and depending on the aircraft you fly on, you will get 30 to 32 inches of legroom. However, the Delta A321 I flew on had 18-inch wide seats compared to 17.5 and 17.2 on my flights with American and United. I will note, not all Delta aircraft have such wide seats. However, I have noticed a trend of Delta's new cabin refreshes more commonly outfitting their economy cabins with wider seats. Also important to note, all of my flights included access to a universal power outlet and individual air vents for superior air quality, both amenities and cabin characteristics that can be especially helpful. Before I dive into the service and amenities I was provided during my flights, consider giving this video a like. It's the easiest way to show your appreciation and helps this review reach more people. Refreshments are usually provided in all full service domestic airlines in flights over about an hour. As all of my flights were over an hour, it was a perfect opportunity to compare the service of each airline. First off, American Airlines provided a standard service of a complimentary snack and drink. The options were plentiful, and I have nothing to complain about. United, however, had issues in this regard. 
While United normally would serve refreshments in the flight I took, they clarified early on that they would not be able to serve any beverages or snack due to turbulence on our route. While I can't blame the airline for something that is allegedly totally out of their control, it was interesting that the supposed harsh turbulence turned out to be extremely mild, in fact more mild than turbulence I experienced on my next flight with Delta Airlines. Delta, unlike United, did in fact serve their refreshment service, regardless of the turbulence occurring. Delta service was very similar to Americans, though technically had a few more options in the snack department. On a face level, all three carriers have similar policies. However, in my experience, United seems to be the least reliable, especially if there is any type of weather on your route. Finally, in regards to the actual service, I have no complaints with any carrier. All the flight attendants and staff I interacted with were friendly and helpful. Another differentiator between the big three are their in-flight entertainment options. Firstly, all airlines have one key feature in common. On almost all domestic routes, they provide Wi-Fi at cost and free movies, TV shows, and music streamable to your own device. Delta, however, provides seatback personal entertainment systems on almost all of their domestic fleet. Most estimates calculate that about 90% of their fleet includes such an amenity, except for the workhorse Boeing 717, which, if you're interested in watching a flight review of, let me know. Keep the notification bell on to get updated when I release new episodes, including one featuring the Boeing 717. Admittedly, there are many other categories we could consider in comparing the service of these three airlines. However, the most crucial factors in choosing between airlines comes down to just a couple categories. The most significant most certainly being the allowance of a free carry-on. Clearly, United underperforms in this category. In the actual service department, Delta stands out with their extra amenities in regards to entertainment and slightly superior in-flight product, including slightly larger seats. And while this may not be true of every flight with these airlines, American seems to have more consistent service than their counterparts at United. Ultimately, choosing your next flight with any of these airlines should not come down to superior service, as they all provide very similar products. It should come down to the price competitiveness on your given route. Basic economy is many times a necessary uncomfort if you need to go from point A to point B without breaking the bank, but also avoiding the unreliable ultra low cost carriers. If you've enjoyed this video or have any insight regarding any of the big three, please comment down below. I'd love to hear your thoughts. Also, if you've liked this type of aviation content, consider becoming a channel member. For as little as a dollar a month, you get access to old content from the channel, exclusive roles on my Discord server, behind the scenes access, and recognition in each of my videos. That's it for this video, I'll see you in the next.